Howdy folks, it is Lanto90 here, and welcome back to my Cataclysm Dark Days tutorial version point F. So, uh, the game launcher has updated, and I've updated the game to version point F. We're going to see what exactly that might cause. That could cause some problems when we load, but we'll see what happens. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to start here just so I could show you guys the loading screen. You just go to load. It shows your world's here. Press enter on the world, and then press enter on your character. And I'll send you in. Let's see. Yeah, something, something is wrong with the no freeze mod. I'm going to ignore it. Could be that the no freeze mod is not working at all, but I just wanted to install it just in case. So it looks like things are working. So that's good. All right. So in this episode today, we're going to cover just a lot of the basic keyboard shortcuts to like a lot of the menus we're going to need. By the way, I forgot that my my uh, fat face is in the way of everything. So give me one moment here. So yeah, in the last episode, you guys probably couldn't see this mini map down here. There it is. It's pretty. And uh, I'm just moving my face to cover the top half of our log here, which isn't that important, all things considered. Okay. So let me figure out which controls we need to go over. We should go over, if you press Shift 2, also known as your, your at sign. Oops, I was tabbed out of the game. Your at sign brings up your main character sheet. This will show you your stats. It'll remind you what the stats actually do as you go up and down the row with your arrow keys. Uh, wait, I don't think overlay does anything. I don't know exactly what being super overweight and super super underweight do. We have avoided in this case. Oh, I forgot. I, say, I set my uh, Asian blood type to mine, but that's not my height. I'm at least six foot. Yeah, we're 5'10". Don't think any of... The blood type is probably the only thing that matters here between these, these options here. The blood type uh, will probably determine what kind of blood bags you can use. I've never really gotten to that deep into the game. And then we can press tab to go over to the next section. So this this one's pretty important. This one's encumbrance and warmth. Here it'll show you all of your body parts. Head, eyes, mouth, torso, arms, left hand, right hand, legs, feet. And each one, these here are our encumbrance numbers. The first number is just the raw in, encumbrance of your clothing, which we'll talk about that once we start getting into the inventory and stuff. And then the second number there that gets added to it is if you have more than two pieces of clothes of the same type on in the same layer. So, for example, if you wear two t-shirts, they're considered as being worn on the same layer, the normal layer to be specific. Again, we're going to talk about layers later. But if you're wearing more than one thing on the same layer, you get a extra encumbrance bonus on top of the regular encumbrance bonus for the clothing. And encumbrance... Um, it negatively affects all these stats in different ways, and you can read those here as you go over these. So head encumbrance doesn't have any effect. It just limits how much you can put on. Um, I think you can put one item on every layer on the head, but I don't think you can put two layers on the same layer on the head. I could be wrong specifically. I don't know exactly what it means by this. But what it does mean is you can wear as heavy as a helmet as you want, and it's not going to actually give you any kind of penalty, which is nice. Eyes. If your eyes are encumbered by wearing glasses and stuff, I know it's kind of odd. Uh, lowers your perception when checking for traps or firing ranged weapons, and increases your dispersion when throwing items. Dispersion is like a um, chance to miss, really. Covering your mouth will make it more difficult to breathe and catch your breath on the mouth. It makes it so your stamina re regains slower if it's too encumbered. Torso, it slows down. I guess this is a 10% less chance to hit. It lowers your dodge skill by one effectively. It makes it so swimming costs more movement and it makes it so melee and thrown attack movements cost more. Arms. Arm encumbrance affects the stamina cost of most melee attacks and accuracy with ranged weapons. Melee stamina costs two more. Dispersion when using ranged attacks, point four. Hands reduces the speed at which you can handle or manipulate items. 
reloading movements, point cost, dexterity while throwing items, melee and thrown weapon movement cost, reduced and kind of aim speed. Legs makes it so your general movement takes longer by one at this point. Swing movement point cost plus 25, dodge skill at point three. And feet movement cost plus one. And so the only things I can really say is usually when you're doing, when you're taking on encumbrance, it's for pretty good stuff like armor and stuff, obviously. Um, I usually not don't tend to worry about it until it turns red, and I try to avoid any layering issues. Now, as long as you do that, these are normally fine. I don't try to micromanage this extremely high. Usually your torso encumbrance is going to be the biggest one, and the one that we're going to have to learn how to deal with as we go. And these numbers in this column are how cold that body part is. I don't know if these represent real... Like, our game is set to Fahrenheit, so I don't think this represents temperatures in Fahrenheit, because negative 27, um, that's, like, unbelievably cold. So I don't think these are real numbers. These are just fictional numbers. But if they're blue, that means you're too cold. So we need to find something to cover our mouth here soon. We'll start seeing pop-ups over here that says your mouth feels cold. You might get frostbit in a few hours. So you, uh, you never want your any body part to be cold. Um... It'll turn yellow if you're too warm, and it'll turn red if you're uh, dying of heat, basically. Uh, we cannot tab to the speed column, but this is where you can see what exactly your normal speed expectation is. And right now, our speed, our base move cost is 88, which is a combination of whatever it is default, which I'm not sure what it is. And then also our encumbrance is negatively affecting it. You probably also get a speed bonus from dexterity because of that one mod. It says our current speed is 114. And uh, you can see the quick trait is shown here as being plus 10%. So we're plus 10% faster at everything with the quick trait. What it did tab us over to, though, is skills. We've already seen skills before, so I'm not going to re reiterate what all these are, but you can look at these again to see what they do. And... Uh, it orders them, it used to order them by whatever was strongest, but now it looks like it's stuck in alphabetical order, which is probably more useful. But yeah, this is where you can see if your skills are and if they're increasing or not. A recap of your traits. There might be situations where you're going to want to take another look at this if you get irradiated. <laughs> you can start having mutations and they'll appear here. Uh, here shows uh, how much power we can use in our bionics. We don't have any bionics or a power source or anything. We'll get to that when we get to that. We're unhappy. This is our last thing is just our effects. We'll see other effects here. If we're tired, if we're hungry. Uh, you might have to be starving. But I think, I think weary now goes in here as a negative effect. Once you start seeing it, pain will go in here as a negative effect. So on and so forth. But since it said that we're unhappy, we're going to look at our mood again. So we actually looked at this earlier. I don't think I explained what key it is, though. It is the V key. If you press V, it shows you your morale. As you can see here, right now we have minus two morale because we want to light a fire because we're a pyromaniac. Um, we're trending. Let's see. Looks like we're already there. We're not just trending. So I don't think it's going to go lower than 98 right now because this is like as bad as it'll be for now. But we might start craving choir more and more if we keep letting this go. And uh, the more that goes down, the more it brings down focus, which I think only affects your XP gain. It used to contribute to like what your score was, but it doesn't. They got rid of the score a long time ago. <laughs> All right. So, we talked about M for map. I have to remind myself about most of these because almost every key on your keyboard does something, <laughs> but some of them are more important than others. So shift three, our hashtag brings up our factions. Um, I haven't messed too much with factions, but uh, one thing that might be useful here is your followers because you can, like we can talk to this NPC and we might be able to do his quest and then he'll want to join us and then we can join him and he'll be listed here. I don't know if dogs and stuff go in here, but you can tame dogs and they might appear in there too. But uh, NPCs for sure. And other factions, you'll start learning about other factions as you're playing the game. 
talk to NPCs and stuff. Not terribly important stuff. Shift four or your money sign is your sleep key. Uh, you can say yes to just sleep. That's how simple as it gets. Uh, you can do this S option here, yes, and save the game before sleeping. You can use you can use the keys on the keyboard that are here in the in the green, or you can use the arrow keys and press enter. I usually use the arrow keys and press enter unless it's something that I need to do a lot. And I'll talk about stuff like that that we might encounter later. But uh, this will give you a save before you sleep, so you can reload that save if you need to. That's what I normally do just in case the game crashes. Sometimes the game crashes when you sleep, so that's a good idea. Or you can just tell it no. Five, our percentage sign, shift, shift five, will bring up just like a general menu of activities we can do currently. Like right now it says we can cut things up with our pocket knife. We can start a fire quickly with our matchbook. We can turn on our cell phone. Don't know why we need to. Maybe we can play like snake on it or something. <laughs> or we can write on an item. Um, I don't think there's really a terrible use for writing on something. I think it's just like, I think if you look at the item, you'll be able to see that you wrote on it down here. Uh, it doesn't really have any effective thing. And then some other stuff is here, but we don't have the tools for it. We can repair clothing. We're going to need a wooden needle for that or a sewing kit, something like that. Uh, repair metal, plastic, or Kevlar is gonna be a soldering iron we're gonna have to find to be able to do something like that. And if, if we get a holster, we can use our holster. I don't really use the five key, I'd usually just use E and then press in a direction that I wanna do something on. Like if we press E, if we do E next to the curtains, it'll give us options of what to do with the curtains. So we can actually tear down the curtains, which we're gonna do later. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it now. So yeah, I pressed E, we're next to the curtain, so it automatically selected them, and I am going to tear down the curtains because we need what that creates. So now if we press E, uh, if we press E, it just shows whatever's nearby. If we get more than one pile though, it's not gonna work right. It's gonna tell you where to look. What I like to do is do Shift E. Oh, that's actually, Shift E is eating. <laughs> Shifty brings up your menu for uh, eating things. Okay, so they've changed the keys, I think. <laughs> it used to be if you pressed E, it would tell you which direction, and then you'd press the direction. Like, I'm gonna go over here real quick. Yeah, now I'm here. There's stuff in both of these cupboards, so now it's saying examine where. That's what just pressing E used to do no matter what, even if there's only one thing next to you. They've tried to make things more context sensitive now. So now that this is the only pile of stuff to interact with, it's the only thing that's coming up here when I press E. But yeah, E basically lets you interact with anything you want. So I'll press E. This brings up, I guess this would be our pickup menu. I don't know if it has a specific name, but that's what I would call it. This is our pickup menu. From tearing down the curtains on this window, we got two sheets, which are like the blinds. We got a long string, which is like that, that thing you pull to close the blinds. We got some nails. I guess that's like from the curtain rod, maybe. And the stout branch, I would say, is also probably a stand-in for your curtain rod. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so you can get useful stuff out of windows. The main thing is these sheets, because we can cut these up into rags, which will allow us to build more clothing. Long string is the same thing. If we cut up the long string, we get short strings. If we cut up short strings, we get thread, which we're going to need for crafting a bunch of clothing as well. But we're not going to mess with that now. Again, you can use the arrow keys to go through this menu. It'll show you what you're looking at. It'll show you... <laughs> so this is another big section. And there's multiple ways to get to this from like your inventory if you have something picked up. But we might as well go over it now. So this is just like everything about the item you're looking at. The sheath, it's made of cotton, which will just kind of tell you what you can get out of it if you break it down. Um, the volume is how physically, how much space it takes up. It's five liters of volume. Its weight is 1.7 pounds, self-explanatory. 
it's considered clothing because we can put it on it's not really clothing though it's like it's really really bad clothing <laughs> it says you can use it as clothing but the main thing you're going to use this for is for uh rags so it gives you a description of what it is uh covers this tells you if it's clothing this tells you where it's going what it's going to cover on your body this will cover our torso our arms our hands our legs our feet so you like we put it over us like a robe basically it covers every piece of the body this layer is it goes on the outer layer of everything so it'll we'll put it on over everything else by default other than strap stuff like a backpack would go on the outside <laughs> but there's several layers i'll show you a better window for what layers are later just know that this goes on the outer layer so if we're wearing anything else on our outer layer outer layer is usually like uh coats and jackets and hoodies and things like that um uh, if you already have one of those on which we do actually uh we'll receive that second penalty to our encumbrance for having two things on the same layer average coverage tells you how much of these body parts it covers so if we <laughs> our hands are under this basically like nothing of our hands is exposed uh outside of this sheet if we wore this so if anything hits us if anything hits our hand which it has to roll what body part it's going to hit to begin with if something hits our hand, it's going to do damage to this first before it does damage to us. It might bleed through damage. We'll talk about that more in combat. But this will guarantee that we're not going to get hit, not get our bare flesh hit. Uh, except its values are very low for its protection. So it'll probably still get hit, but gives us something. Warmth is how warm the clothing is. This is the same number as our uh, our numbers here in the character sheet. So if we put this on, it'll reduce all these by 10. You know what? We'll go ahead and put it on now. So to put something on that's nearby, I just like to do Shift W. That brings up an automatic wear thing, which will show anything that's nearby that you can wear. And I'm just going to press Enter on one of those. You can see our, our character has actually changed here. I can actually see that his sling is on the outside, but again, we'll talk about layers here in a moment. But now that we're wearing it, if we go back to here, you can see that our warmth has increased on a number of our body parts. It's not enough to make these uncold. Actually, it didn't cover our head, so it didn't help those at all. But it reduced all of these by 10. But you can also see that it increased their encumbrance. I think it was all by 15. And yeah, now all of these are yellow is not fantastic i actually thought we were wearing outerwear but i think i think they warmed the game up a little bit more so you don't start with as warm clothing as you used to but now i want to take another look at this sheet so instead of looking at this other one on the ground perhaps i'm going to press shift i to open my inventory and uh everything on the left here is stuff that are like in our pockets and in our backpacks and stuff like that stuff stuff that we're carrying pretty much and then it's sorted by category of what kind of stuff it is we can use the arrows to go up and down there our arrow keys are a little different here if we press right arrow key it will select the item we, we can actually just compare them now so if we huh, that's different Oh, you know what? I think I did shift I, didn't I? Yeah. So shift I is actually the compare menu. I actually forgot. Shift I lets you compare two things uh, next to each other. So let's see. Like we consider the pocket knife like a weapon, right? So I'll press an arrow key on the pocket knife. Now I'm like, hmm, maybe the stout branch is a better item. And everything here is on the floor near us. To get over there, we press the left arrow. We don't use tab in this menu for some reason. I'm not sure exactly why. I guess we can press tab and see. Oh, it selects a whole category. Not going to mess with that yet. <laughs> but uh, we use the left tab to go through these uh, menus. And I'm going to use right arrow on the stout branch. And now it's comparing them. 
So when you're comparing things, it'll show you like what's better and what's worse about each one. Pocket knife has less volume and less weight, so that's considered better. It's not as long, so that's considered better because that limits backpacks now have a limited length of what they can fit in them. So you'd have to have a backpack that can at least fit a 51 inch item for the stout branch to fit in it. So the pocket knife is considered better. Category doesn't matter too much. But then we can see the melee damage. The pocket knife does seven pierce. The stout branch does 14 bash. So quite a bit more, twice as much damage in the bash category. Although some people say that piercing is a better type of damage. We'll see, but our character in particular we know is good at with bash weapons, so we might use the stout branch. Two hit bonus, we talked about that. It's a chance to hit. It's better on the stout branch. It's highlighted in green for us. Uh, the pocket knife's faster, though. It doesn't require half as many moves, basically. And then there's a DPS breakdown here. Interesting, this actually does more damage versus armor targets than the piercing damage does, which is surprising to me. Maybe it's already integrating our skill with bashing weapons into this number. This is a newer thing, so I don't know exactly, but obviously you can tell the stout branch is better. Also, it has a technique well wielded block. This has a medium blocking ability. This just happens on its own. We don't like activate special attacks or anything. This will just happen. Uh, this one doesn't, so that helps it. That makes it a better weapon as well. The pocket knife though has a bunch of qualities to it. These are special things that this tool can do. It can butcher things, it can cut things, and it can finally cut things. Talk more about that when we're crafting though. Stop branch has no ability like that. Uh, it tells what you can use to repair the item. Um, conducts electricity, rarely comes up. But uh, there is some enemies that are electric enemies and holding things that are holding or wearing things that are metal will make them more effective against you than wearing things that are not metal. Uh, Same so can serve as firewood, just means it can be burned as firewood. We'll talk about that later. These are things that can be stored in. So, you know, the we mentioned the holster earlier. All of these would be considered types of holsters well actually well some of these are holsters and some of them are not some are just things that are big enough to put it inside of <laughs> I think so it's a little iffy but uh, that just tells you things they can go inside there you go those can go in a back holster uh, price is what it can sell for to a NPC I don't know exactly what buyer value means our value might be its actual value to NPCs and 10 might be what it should be worth. Maybe this is affected by our speech skill. You can find out later, I imagine. And then it tells you things you could craft with it. But there's so many things I can craft with these that it's not going to list them. All right, just press escape to get out of there. Press escape again because I wanted to get to my inventory, which is this regular eye. So just pressing I, we get to our inventory. This will not let us compare things. Now left and right, both. Uh, navigate this menu. We are going to go up and down our items worn menu and press enter on our sheets so we can keep going through this. So protection, this shows you what your protection values are against different types of stuff. This has 0.1 against bash, 0.1 against cut, 0.1 against ballistics. There used to be, this used to be pierce. I don't know if pierce is now separate from ballistics, but maybe it is. Um, if that's the case, this item doesn't have any pierce resistance. Zero acid resistance, zero fire resistance, zero environmental resistance. Some enemies uh, spill acid, so acid protection protects you against that. Fire protects you from walking through fire. Environmental, though, it's a little more complicated, but there is things that like emit spores and stuff that you don't want to get on you. And environmental protection can help you against that. I think it may also help you with radiation. Not specifically sure, but it's, yeah, it's like gen it's like general biohazard type stuff. And it looks like they've updated the game. Or obviously they have, but uh, it used to be that things didn't have point value. Or yeah, they weren't like 0 0.1 or anything like that. They were just 
like the minimum you could have is the one so apparently they can have point values now which might make things a little more difficult i think uh you mentioned you can repair it with these things item can be reinforced reinforced is like an extra layer of protection it can boost these numbers up a little bit as far as like the raw protection value goes but the main thing is it can absorb an extra hit at the at the least it can absorb an extra hit if you reinforce it we'll talk about how to do that later disassembly takes you tells you how long it's going to take to disassemble it with tools and what you can get out of it if you disassemble it there's two things there's disassembly and there's butchery we'll, we'll talk about those as we get to them disassembly takes a lot longer but you get a lot more stuff out of it uh, butchering is a lot faster but uh you don't get as much out of it uh, we read some of these in the other menu, but there's extra stuff here. Um, it won't hinder special attacks that involve mutated anatomy. So you can grow tentacles and stuff with certain mutations and things like that. Uh, this won't get in the way of using your tentacle attacks. Worn over. I don't know exactly what the difference between worn over and layer being outer is exactly. I guess if you have two things on the outer layer, this thing would automatically get put above the other outer layer thing. They would still get a penalty, though, so I don't think that matters that much. It's large enough to accommodate abnormally large mutated anatomy. So again, you can get like tentacle arms and legs and things like that. This will, this is something we can wear that uh, won't get in the way of those. If we, if we mutate and we're wearing clothes that don't say this, I think they just like fall off of our body. And then we can't put them back on. Uh, this clothing is oversized and does not fit me. But at the same time, this clothing cannot be refitted upsized or downsized. So a lot of clothing, you can continue to repair it after it's fully repaired. And uh, if you do that, it will fit the clothes to you if you have the capability to do it. It's uh, based on your tailoring skill. Stored in, talked about that. Bar to value, talked about that. You can see this has less things that we can craft with it. So it's saying specifically what stuff we can make with it. And yes, apparently we can build up a, a uh, body pillow with it. We are out of time for this video, though. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed. If you did, remember to hit the like button. Keep the conversation going in the comments and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Until next time, hope you have a good day.